y'all doing? All right. <laughs> I'm doing good. Y'all full? Good. good. Now don't you go to sleep. <laughs> okay. It is time, high time, to start our program. We are so excited and we are happy and happy glad that you came to be with us on this day. We are happy. Now, I don't want to read this whole program, so I'm going to ask a question. Does everyone have a program? Raise your hand. We got some urchins back there that will make sure that you get one. You don't have one, now raise your hand up. You know how we used to do it in school, y'all know. We do it at work too, you have to raise your hand, yeah. Now, what? So, I'm just gonna read the first few lines. So, please silence your phones. Keep your hands up. We got a couple up here that, a couple up here that don't have program. We're out. Who else needed one? It's some up there in the pulpit. Okay. All right. Now. Take these off and read. Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, 660 Highway 79 South, Magnolia, Arkansas. Homecoming and 135th church anniversary celebration. Amen. Our guest minister is Reverend Pierce Moore. Guest church is First Baptist Cordell. Amen. Now, will the choir please take the choir stand? Amen. Come on, choir. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he said, he okay. <laughs> now, since everyone has a program, we're going to go with the program as printed. Okay? Now, if there are any changes, I'll get back up. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sister One Nita. Okay. So we do have a change. Our welcome is going to be by Sister Juanita Gardner. Amen. Amen. Sister Jones is ill at this time. So Sister Juanita Gardner is going to do the welcome. Any other changes? All right. Okay. All right. Then we will let the choir get us started.
taking my sword and shield and he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel I know he'll never no he'll never he's just a tool that I have found oh hallelujah hallelujah I love to praise his name oh hallelujah hallelujah I love to praise oh hallelujah hallelujah I love to praise
this evening, Heavenly Father, bow down just to say thank you. We come this evening, Heavenly Father, bow down on bending knees, thanking you for another opportunity. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This morning, oh Heavenly Father, you started us out on a brand new day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This morning, oh Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you gave us a brand new opportunity. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This morning, Heavenly Father, you let us look around, seeing our families as well as they are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Heavenly Father, this morning as we arrive to this new day, yes, yes. we just want to thank you for the opportunity you, that you yes, have given us one more opportunity to get right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But you allowed us, oh, Heavenly Father, this morning to travel the dangerous highways yes, yes. to make it to your house of worship. Yes. Heavenly Father, this morning you allowed us once again to look around the table and see something to eat on. Yes. Yes. Heavenly Father, you allowed us this morning to look into our closets and find some clothes yeah, yeah, to go on our backs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this morning, oh Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this thank you. Oh, our Heavenly Father, you allowed us once again to see the evening out. Yes, mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, you brought us through. Yeah. You continue to bless us. Yeah, Heavenly yeah. Father, you allowed us this evening, this morning to come and be a witness to your word. Yes. Yes. You allowed us this morning, oh Heavenly Father, to come into your house of worship to be better off coming in than we were going to be going out. Yes. 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 Heavenly yes. Father, you let us once again to come to your evening worship service yes. to yes. 135th yes. church anniversary. Thank you, Lord. So this evening, Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to reach this present thank time. Yes. Yes. Knowing, yes. Heavenly Father, that we have done things wrong, knowing we have sinned against your will, yeah, yeah. knowing, that, oh, Heavenly Father, that we are not worthy, but we serve the Almighty God to make it all possible. So we continue to want to intrigue on your word. So, Heavenly Father, this morning as we come, we thank you for the man that's going to stand and preach your word, oh, Heavenly Father. Let him say something to us here this evening, Heavenly Father, that would make us want to be more like you. Yes. Yes. Let him say something this evening, oh Heavenly Father, that would make us love like we should. Boy, yes. Let him say something this evening, Heavenly Father, that would make us want to put a smile on our face. Yes. Oh Heavenly yes. Father, this evening we just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Heavenly Father, I just can't say thank you enough yes. for you allowed me one more opportunity. Yes. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, this evening as we come, we just thank you for everyone that's here. Represented here today under one roof yeah, yeah. for one cause, oh Heavenly Father. Yeah. That's to be a witness and obedient to your word. Yeah, yeah, Heavenly yeah, Father, yeah. we ask you to bless the other ministries. Bless. That's on the roster this evening, yeah, yeah. Heavenly Father. Continue to bless them. Bless. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to bless this little church yeah. called Mount Zion. Lord, yeah. Lord, Let Lord. us continue to be blessed yeah. by your word, Heavenly Father. Lord, but yeah. our Heavenly Father, we know the struggles are coming. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we serve an almighty and awesome God. Yeah. 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 You know, all yeah. of us yeah. yeah. put our trust in you, yeah. and everything yeah. will be all right. Yeah. 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 Heavenly yeah. Father, we just thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Heavenly Father, this evening, we just want to thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the young kids, oh, Heavenly Father, yeah. this yeah. 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 Heavenly yeah. Father, we just can't thank you enough. Yeah. Because yeah. your blessings yeah. will make us want to continue to thank you. Yeah. But our Heavenly Father, most of all, we just thank you for Friday. Yeah. We yes, thank sir. you, Heavenly Father, for Saturday. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, most of all, yeah. we thank you for early Sunday morning. Yeah. I said early Sunday morning. Yeah. When you got up with all oh, power, yeah. oh, yeah. power in your hands yeah. to be here, for us to be here this evening. So we can just continue to thank you and praise thank your you. holy name. Heavenly Father, we ask these blessings tonight, Son Jesus.
such a blessing to have each and every one of you here with us today. Amen. On behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, yes, yes. our preach brethren that are here, Amen. our pastor, you all know that the Lord called home. Amen. In honor of him, yes. our first lady, Amen. visiting Pastor Moore, Amen. his wife, Amen. staff, everybody that's here. Let me just say this. Now, I know we all felt welcome when we was in the kitchen eating. At least I hope you did. Because, you know, we had some of them, baby, bring me a piece of chicken. Then, you know, had some of them, baby, bring me. So if whether I brought you, when you said bring or bring, I hope you felt welcome. So now we know that we as Christians are looking forward to that day when we all go to heaven. And you know when we get there, it's going to be a shouting good time. What is it? What a time, what a time. So if that's true, let's start practicing right now. I hope you ain't too full. Try not to go to sleep. I'm going to do my level best. And we are going to have a time in the Lord this day. Because what is this? Willie Neal Johnson and the Gospel Keynote says this is just a rehearsal. So we're getting ready to go. Right. So I tell you what, First Baptist, Cordell, uh -huh. Brother Taylor, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just as welcome as y'all can be. Amen. Thank you so much. that speaking on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Pierce Moore, and the First Baptist Church family, that we are honored. We are above honored. We consider ourselves to be privileged to have you have, to have selected us. And we stand in agreement with you in the loss of your pastor because what touches the heart and one of God's family touches another Amen. so we are in agreement with you we love you and love is a very funny thing you know people say I can love you what I can get out of you and if you can't give me what I want I kick you to the curb and find somebody who will but I just heard that we came here for a couple of things. One, for a homecoming. And Abraham Lincoln said once, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool them all, all the time. And a grin is a funny thing, you know? A smile is a funny thing. That hypocritical grin, that smile. If you look long enough, if they're not honest and really sincere, it's like a wolf in sheep clothing. You'll see the teeth that will come after you. But my hat goes off to you. 
my hat goes off to you. You not only walk the walk, talk the walk, you walk the walk. We watch the expression of each and every one of you. Several reasons we are here today for a homecoming. What you have shown us, if you show the outlying community what you have shown us today, you won't have no trouble filling this church and keeping your member because try the spirit by the spirit. If it's in you and you got it, it will spread from you and go outward. We thank you for inviting us. And as uh, Sir Gardner said, that we knew that we were welcome. Some of us knew that we were so welcome that we had to grunt to try to get up because we overdid it. The food was fabulous. It was fabulous. You outdid yourself. You have great cooks. And as a married man, if it's true with uh, the spirit, it said try the spirit by the spirit. And then the best way to keep a man is through his stomach. If you want to entrap people, you keep cooking the way you cooking. You keep doing the way you doing. And once you can get them, as my pastor said, that in order uh, to first, when you catch a fish, he said, you got to clean it. So once you catch them with the food, then if they not saved, you won't have no trouble saving them because you have, I love your spirit. It is a powerful spirit. It's a loving spirit. And I personally knew uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Colon, because I worked with him in the Upward Bound. Such a loving spirit. And words cannot say what I really truly want to say, but I would listen to the choir sing, and they said, uh, hold on just a little while longer, and everything will be all right. And then Sister Gardner put the icing on the cake, and she said, you know, this is just a rehearsal. We down here practicing trying to get it right. And we came here today to help you keep the fire burning, keep the love of Jesus going, keep the love in your heart, and God knows your heart, and he will take care of you. Thank you again for inviting us, loving us, and treating us as part of your extended family. May God bless and keep you.
any hurt, any answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, yeah. I church history of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church began in 1889, 135 years ago, when God directed the vision of five men to organize this church. The land was donated, members were organized, and the first building was built on this present site. The church's leadership is given by God. Jeremiah 3 and 15 states, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Past pastors of Mount Zion were Reverend C.S. Booker, served here for many years. Reverend Perry Shepherd served for a year. Reverend J.S. Abbott served for 14 years. Reverend J.W. French labored for five years and the church was rebuilt during his tenure. Reverend B.J. Harper spent 27 years doing the Lord's work at Mount Zion and the church was rebuilt again under his leadership. Reverend J.T. Abbott was the next minister of Mount Zion and he spent 22 years here. It was during his tenure and under his leadership that the present structure was built. After the late Reverend Abbott retired, the late Reverend Herman Green accepted the call and came to us in October of 1986 and served until August 1988. Reverend Jerry Bishop assumed the duties of pastor in October 1988 until 1992. Pastor Wendell F. Colin accepted the call of pastoring us in August of 1992 and God blessed us to grow spiritually, physically, and financially during the tenure. Amen. 
Although our beloved Dr. Cullen is no longer with us physical, we cherish his memory and we remember his teachings and walk a Christian path for our youth and others to follow. During these 135 years of existence, Mount Zion has been blessed to have many outstanding deacons and very capable trustees. We are blessed currently to have seven dedicated deacons and trustees of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom appointed over the business. With the help of God, Mount Zion has accomplished remarkable things over the past years. We have built, remodeled, polished, scrubbed, painted, and, and purchased furniture and did what we could to improve this house the Lord has given us. We are presently with us associate ministers, Reverend George Borns, Reverend Adrian Napper, Amen. and Reverend Mario Moore. Amen. <laughs> associate, <clears throat> associate ministers, Reverend Ernest Moore, now pastor of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in McNeil, Amen. Reverend Stevie Gardner, and Reverend W.C. Timms, our honorary ministers um, here dedicated to the work of the Lord. Amen. Also during these 135 years, many men, women, and children have called Mount Zion their church home, and God has called many members home, and they are now in eternal rest. As we close our history upon up until this point, we must never forget um, we got where we are today. We must also remember that we cannot let our history be all that we are about. We must now make history that we'll read here at some later date. We must work and work of him that sent us while it is day. So we have 135 years behind us, and if Jesus delays his coming, we will have many years ahead of us. Let us continue to be a light for those in search of a light. We, still, we are still about the Father's business of spreading the word of God to the world until Jesus returns for his people. Like I said, once again, Mount Zion has really been blessed for 135 years to have all the pastors, and um, we are just going to keep moving forward and continue to be blessed by God.
Amen. I gave away my program too quick, so thank y'all for bearing with me. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Let the church say amen again. For the Father, for the Son, and for the Holy Spirit. Church, we ought to celebrate the fact we get to celebrate homecoming one more time. So we celebrate this one more time. Because the Lord has been good to us, brought us a mighty long way. Because while I can think of the goodness of Jesus, what he's done for us over 135 years, Mount Zion, we ought to just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm so happy and glad that I get this task here today because the man of God who is coming before us was well, the reason, one of the reasons why I want to be a preacher. Amen. Because <laughs> I remember sitting out in those pews before I got to sit up here listening to him bring the word of God. And even then, I can tell that he is the one that has walked with Jesus. Through the valleys, on the mountaintop, this man knows his Savior. And I can tell that just not even how he preaches, but even how he showed himself friendly even to me. From the first day we met to the times and the conversation, even the teaching I've heard from him, he has impacted me, and I know First Baptist Cordell can say the same thing, that, amen, amen. amen. yeah, y'all can show your love to so your pastor, amen, you can show some love. Amen. In every aspect of his life, I see the hand of God upon him, even in how he builds puzzles. <laughs> the man can build a puzzle, and I say, man, the only one who follows Jesus can do something like that, amen, and, and I praise God for his influence his mentorship, and his teaching, and his love for the church. Amen. Now, I don't really have to worry about whether or not he's going to preach or not because I've yet to hear a bad sermon from him. <laughs> he is going to say what thus says the Lord. But the question always is, is will we receive what the Lord has given to us here today? And just like we are talking about how it was quick to receive that chicken back there in the back, let us be quick, ready, willing, and able to receive the word of God that is going to be given to us here today. Church, it's preaching time. Church, it's preaching time. So without further ado, I would like to present to some, introduce to others, the proud pastor of First Baptist Church Cordell of Edelreda, Arkansas, none other than the Reverend Dr. Pierce Moore. May we all stand and receive him here today. Our Father and our God, how we thank you and how we praise you again for this another blessed privilege 
to assemble ourselves in the house of worship. We realize that your word says that you are spirit, and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, what our ears have heard, when our hearts have felt. And we come acknowledging that prayers and praise have been offered up to you. I pray that our prayers and our praise have been a sweet-smelling savor in thy divine nostrils. But we know that if your word is to be proclaimed, that preaching must come down. And so I ask now that you would empty me of me and fill me with thee. Oh God, I pray now that you would focus my mind, that you would frame my thoughts, that you would fix my words, that I might be able to stand and cut straight the word of truth, not for my fame and not for my reputation, but unto the end that you would be glorified and that the body of Christ would be edified. I pray that he that hath an ear to hear would hear what the Spirit says unto the church. For we come not by might nor by power, but by your Spirit, Lord. And I pray that whatever is said and whatever is done be for your glory and for your honor and for the edifying of the body of Christ. It is in your name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. Certainly we give honor and praises to God our Father, to Jesus Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit who leads us, guides us, and directs us in the way of all truth. Certainly to all of the preachers that's in the house, both in the pulpit and in the pew. And certainly to uh, Sister Colin and to uh, the Mount Zion Church family. Certainly to my wife and to all of those members of First Baptist who journeyed uh, with us, uh, we thank God for our being here. And we certainly today honor our friend and brother who has transitioned to be with the Lord, friend and brother, Pastor Colin. I wanted today in, in this service, I wanted to honor him, amen, in some way. And so I know he wore black and gold. Amen and uh, amen, a amen. And if if he were here today, uh, he would say, "I knew you always wanted to be." And, amen. And, and 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 we and we'd have a very interesting discussion. Amen. I thank God for him. I thank God for his leadership of this church. Amen. All of these years. And I say this, and I don't say this lightly. I tell folk, and I, my church, our church, will tell you that I said to them, I, I'm, I pray for Mount Zion, but I'm not worried about Mount Zion. Amen. I, I, I want to say that again. I pray for Mount Zion, but I'm not worried about Mount Zion because I know what's been deposited uh, in this church. A amen. And if you stand, if you stand on what you've been taught and what has been preached and more importantly, what has been lived out before you, amen, Saint, this church, Mount Zion, will be fine. I can't say that about a lot of churches, a amen, uh, because a lot of us are members of the Anything Goes Baptist Church, a a amen. A amen, but I knew where your pastor stood, and, and I know he believed in a man that got killed one Friday, buried in a barbary tomb, and as he was so early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And so we thank you for inviting us to come and to share our feeble thoughts, amen, about Christ. I don't have a word in me that's sufficient enough. And so I asked the Lord to loan me a word that I might break a fresh loaf among his people. I didn't come to bore you. The pulpit was made for preaching. The necessity has been laid upon me. And woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This 135th homecoming and church anniversary celebration. 
The Lord said the same on the second Sunday in September. We will be celebrating 154 years. And I want to say this. A lot of folk come through the church. A lot of folk think the church can't make it without them. But the church is not built upon people. The church is built upon a person. And his name is Jesus. Amen. He is the foundation. He is the chief cornerstone. And everything uh, measured in the church off of the corner. The corner gives guideline to the building. Gives the building its structure. Gives the building its foundation. Bricks and mortar is not the church. The church is a body of baptized believers. Blood bought. Blood washed. Bible told. Scripture quoting. Foot tapping. Hand raising. Amen saying. Body of believers. On our way to one heaven. To worship one God. His son died one Friday, was buried in one tomb, and got up one Sunday morning, rode one cloud, back to glory, sat down in one seat on the right hand of one God, and is coming back again. Put one foot on dry land and one foot on the sea. He's coming back for one church, born again, baptized believers. If you're not a part of the church, this is a good day for you to get involved with the church of God. I want to call your attention to Mark chapter 5. I want to read verses 18 through 20. When you get home, read chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Mark chapter 5, verse 18 through 20. 20, a familiar passage of scripture. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and had had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Verse 20 says again, and he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. I want to share uh, this afternoon from this thought, the testimony of a crazy man. The testimony of a crazy man. All of us know folk who we have labeled as crazy. And I want to tell you, I don't want to diminish, and I want you to understand that I'm not talking about folk who are really suffering from mental health issues that they have no power over, no control over, that they can do anything about. Because mental illness is a serious thing. And many people are in denial about the issues that they are having. I want to I want to park here and tell you that it's nothing wrong uh, with you uh, praying and talking to the Lord, uh, but it's also nothing wrong with you having a therapist, somebody you can go talk to and help you unpack the issues that you are going through in life uh, because we as a people has been real private uh, and didn't want anybody to know uh, that we suffer sometime uh, from some issues uh, that's beyond uh, our control. I I thank God today that that the Lord is able. He, He is able 
uh, to deliver. The Lord can, the Lord will, uh, uh, the Lord shall uh, deliver. Uh, but sometimes uh, the deliverance that God has for you uh, involves uh, another person. And so I want, to, I, I want you to understand, my, my brothers and sisters, even in the midst of this topsy-turvy world that we live in, I, I want to tell you at this time of homecoming, uh, everybody is not allowed uh, to come home uh, because sometimes people have some issues uh, that drive them uh, from home. I wish you would I wish you would travel with me today because that's the discipline that's in the discourse of our text. Uh, there is a man uh, who had to leave home uh, because he couldn't stay at home uh, because he was causing uh, some problems uh, at home. And I won't tell you, my brothers and sisters, in the church sometime, uh, we have to allow some folk uh, to leave home. Uh, in order to get themselves uh, together uh, so they are able uh, to come uh, back home. All my brothers and sisters, this text, this text finds uh, uh, it itself with Jesus uh, coming uh, through a storm. If you read the latter part of Mark chapter 4, you will find that Jesus uh, and his disciples uh, had gone over unto the other side. Uh, and as they were going over onto the other side, a storm broke out uh, on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus uh, was trying to get some rest. Jesus was trying to lay down in the hull of the ship. Uh, and, and the storm came up and somebody uh, took a motion and a second and said, uh, I so move uh, that somebody go and wake up Jesus. But can I help you today and tell you that you better a living life uh, on board with a sleeping Jesus uh, than trying to ride through a storm uh, without him. Jesus um, is in the hull of the ship. Uh, they wake him up uh, and says, Master, carest thou not uh, that we perish? Jesus didn't answer the disciples. Jesus walked uh, on board the ship uh, and told the wind and the waves uh, to be still. Uh, and they laid down like a baby. Uh, that thunder, that lightning that had been writing his zigzag name across the bosoms of the clouds uh, stopped flashing. Uh, and they had to leave there saying, what matter? A man is this. That even the winds and the waves uh, obey his will. And it's amazing to me that after every victory, after every time there's a move of God in the church, uh, why is it that the devil get busy? I, I, I don't know if you ever paid, I don't know if you ever paid an attention to that, but have uh, a strong worship service uh, where the Shekinah glory of God has come and sat down uh, on the place and and you lost track of time because you was rejoicing and you leave here happy and as soon uh, as you get outside the doors uh, you have an encounter with Satan. Maybe 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 that hadn't been your Maybe that hadn't been your experience, but I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that there are three different forces uh, that's at work uh, in the text. Uh, I, I dare you to stay with me because the reality is Jesus um, has come through a storm in order that a man uh, that nobody could do anything with is having some problems. Oh, I want to tell you that there are some folk that you just can't do anything with. Because some folk, is there. It, it is not them, but it's what's controlling them. See, a lot of times in church, we have problems uh, because we're dealing with symptoms um, and not dealing with the source. I, I, I want to help you. Sometimes we are dealing with symptoms and not with the source. Y'all missed that. Sometimes we are dealing with symptoms and not dealing uh, with the source. 
there are three different forces that's at work in the text. First, uh, the, 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 the first uh, problem that we encounter in the text is, my brothers and sisters, and there, uh, when Jesus arrived uh, at the other side of the lake or the Sea of Galilee, uh, when Jesus gets out of the boat, uh, there's a man that the Bible says that he is possessed uh, with devils. In other man, this, this man is a walking holiday inn of horrors. Uh, amen. Uh, he got many demons like the Holiday Inn has many rooms. Uh, and the rooms are filled to capacity. Y'all ever try to make a hotel reservation? And you call the hotel and you give them the dates that you plan to be there. And they say, we overbooked. Uh, we, we sold out. For the days that you want to be here, this man had no more room for anybody uh, to be able to occupy uh, him. And so he's possessed by an evil spirit. And the evil spirit, when he came out of the tombs, uh, they met Jesus. Lord, have mercy. I wish y'all stay with me that they, they met Jesus. Notice Jesus uh, didn't have to introduce himself. You see, when there's a spirit uh, that's contrary to the Holy Spirit, uh, that spirit gets agitated when the Holy Ghost shows up. That, that's, why, that's why some folk uh, can't handle some other people in church. I know it doesn't happen in Magnolia, uh, but east of here, there are times uh, when folk that's filled with the Spirit shows up. Uh, the folks who are of a contrary spirit uh, get agitated uh, because you showed up. You, you don't have to say much. You don't have to say much. You want to know the folk that really got the Holy Ghost? They don't have to say nothing. A amen. All they got to do is show up. Uh, uh, you, you don't have to wear a sign around your neck. All you got to do is show up. Uh, you don't need a cross around your neck. You just need to show up. Uh, you don't need a frog cap says full of rely on God. Uh, uh, you, you just need to show up. You don't need a T-shirt that says too blessed to be stressed. Uh, you just need to show up. Uh, you just need to show up. And when you show up, when you show up, the enemy will always act up. And so my brothers and sisters, the, the first source that I see in the text is the source of Satan. Uh, I, I, I want to tell you first, we, 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 what Satan can do, we see what Satan can do to people. Satan uh, is a thief uh, whose ultimate purpose is to kill, uh, to steal, uh, and to destroy. Uh, well, we are not told how the demons entered uh, this man. Uh, we don't know where the demon come from. We don't know how the demons got in the man, uh, but the reality is uh, that the demon is in him. And can, can I pause here? Uh, for a moment and tell you, my brothers and sisters, uh, there's only two sources for the way you act. Either you a spirit field or you a demon field. A a amen. Uh, there, there's no ifs and buts about it. You can't have it both ways. Uh, either you're with the Lord or you're against him. Uh, Either you're on the devil's side or you against him. Huh? But I want to tell you, you can't serve uh, two masters uh, at the same time. Uh, and so, my brothers and sisters, uh, I don't know how this man uh, uh, was uh, uh, encountered these demons, uh, but the demons uh, had taken control uh, of the man. Uh, I don't know if it was a result of him yielding uh, uh, to sin, uh, but these unclean spirits uh, had gained a foothold uh, in this man's life. Uh, and we have to be careful uh, as we celebrate homecoming uh, and as we celebrate this anniversary uh, is that we can't allow Satan uh, to get a stronghold uh, in the church. Uh, somebody got to stand uh, on the truth uh, of God's word 
And when you have the truth of God's word uh, have taken residence uh, in your life, uh, the psalmist said, how shall a young man uh, keep his ways pure? Is by taking heed uh, according to the word. Uh, your word uh, have I hid uh, in my heart uh, that I might not sin uh, against God. Uh, I want to tell you, Mount Zion, you can make it uh, because the word uh, is resident uh, in this church. Uh, and when you stand on the word, uh, the enemy uh, have to take a back seat uh, because the spirit of God uh, is so strong uh, among the people of God. Oh, yeah, this, 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 this demon, these demons had gotten a foothold uh, uh, in, in the church. And because this man has yielded to Satan, he's yielded to the thief, uh, this man has lost uh, Everything. Uh, can I tell you what he lost? Uh, he lost uh, his home uh, and the fellowship of his family and friends. Uh, he lost uh, his decency because he ran around uh, in the tombs uh, naked. Uh, he had to be crazy because he's living uh, in a cemetery. Uh, he lost uh, self-control, uh, lived like a wild animal, uh, screaming and cutting himself uh, and frightening others, uh, he lost uh, his peace uh, and his purpose uh, for living, uh, and so he re his plight remained, uh, and so Jesus uh, came to rescue him, uh, and Jesus came through a storm. Uh, can I help you and tell you, my brothers and sisters, uh, that Jesus uh, will come through a storm uh, to save you? Somebody missed that. Uh, Jesus uh, will come through a storm uh, to save you uh, from yourself. Uh, and aren't you glad today that Jesus uh, came through to save this man uh, from the destructive power uh, of, of Satan. Uh, he is our enemy and would destroy all of us uh, if he could. Uh, because the scripture says like a roaring lion, uh, he's going about uh, seeking uh, whom uh, he may devour. And so, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the first force uh, that we see is Satan. Uh, the second source that we see in the text uh, is the source uh, of, of the society where the, this man uh, lived. Uh, but society was not able uh, to accomplish uh, very much. In other words, society couldn't do nothing uh, about this man uh, and his issues. I thank God, uh, our brothers and sisters, that there are some things in place uh, to try to help us get through. Uh, but the only thing uh, that'll make us whole uh, is the Savior. Uh, they, they, they tried some stuff. How many folk uh, have you known? They've gone uh, to every seven-step and 12-step program uh, that's available. Uh, they've been through, they've been to Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, and they said, uh, my name uh, is Joe, uh, and I am uh, an alcoholic. Uh, and Joe makes it uh, for about six months, uh, and then uh, Joe's old buddies uh, begin to show up. Uh, they start passing the bottle, uh, and they tell Joe, Joe, just one uh, little sip won't hurt you. Uh, and Joe end up going back uh, into what he came uh, out of. I know Joe is not sitting in this church. Uh, and I know uh, Jennifer is not sitting in this church. Uh, but just in case, uh, if y'all see Joe or Jennifer, uh, tell them, uh, be careful. Uh, because what they got uh, was a Band-Aid uh, and not a solution. Uh, oh, my brothers and my brothers and sisters, this, this man... This man was sitting in the cemetery cutting himself uh, with stones, and they tried to bind him uh, with fetters uh, and chains, uh, which tells me that society can't handle uh, your spiritual issue. Uh, it tells me, my brothers and sisters, uh, that we can't deal with spiritual matters uh, with physical uh, solutions. Uh, we need help uh, from somewhere else. Uh, and so this, these demons, uh, not the man, but the demons that's in the man, uh, recognizes uh, who Jesus is. Uh, Jesus didn't show up uh, and say, I'm Jesus. Uh, I am the son of God. Uh, I am the lamb of God that will take away the sins of the world. Uh, Jesus didn't say, I'm the one that dries up issues of blood. Uh, Jesus didn't say that I was the fourth man uh, in the fiery furnace. Uh, Jesus didn't say, uh, I didn't close lion's mouth. 
Gentiles in a den. Uh, Jesus did not say, I, I'm the bread breaker, fish blesser, and water walker. Uh, Jesus uh, did not say, uh, I'm the one uh, who raises the dead. Uh, I'm the one that make lame folk walk. Uh, Jesus showed up, uh, and the demons uh, recognized Jesus. Uh, the Bible says uh, that they came and bowed before him uh, and said, why did you come to torment us? Oh, my brothers and sisters, the, th the, third, the third source of the text is the Savior. We have Satan. We have society. But here's the shout. We got the Savior. Y'all missed it. We, 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 we got the Savior. And, and Jesus uh, shows up and encounters uh, this man. And Jesus says, what is thy name? Man said, so my name is Legion. Because we are many. Don't, don't you make the mistake in saying that this man had 6,000 demons because Legion uh, is, a, is a, a detachment of Roman soldiers. Uh, and it said it takes 6,000 to make up a Legion. Uh, all the man was saying uh, is that there's a whole lot of us uh, on the inside uh, of this man. Uh, I don't know how many, uh, but one demon uh, was too many. Uh, amen. If you're dealing with one demon, uh, you got one demon uh, too many uh, because one demon uh, can mess up some stuff. Uh, some folk dealing with financial demons. Uh, you dealing with a marriage demon. Uh, you dealing with children demon. Uh, amen. You dealing with a job demon. Uh, we, some of us are about to deal, trying to deal uh, with another future president demon if we not careful. Say amen if you can. We, we got to understand that we, we one demon is too many. And so Jesus uh, uh, commands them to come out. And, and in commanding them to come out, uh, they didn't want to, to leave town. You got to understand this place of Gadara, this is a place, uh, this is a Gentile uh, territory. And, 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 and in this Gentile territory, uh, they raised pigs. One of the things you could be sure to find in Gadara was people and pigs. A, a, a man. And they are there. And the demon says, uh, we have a request. Not only was there three forces in the text, there are three requests in the text. Uh, the first request is, uh, is the demon said, uh, allow us uh, to go into the swine. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That, that, that's the first request. They said, allow us to go in the swine. Jesus grants their request. And the text says that they ran violently down a steep hill into the water and committed piggicide. I I'm in the Bible. That's, that's what they done. They ran violently. Down the hill, went into the water, and committed. And because of what happened, the folks wanted money over mercy. The second request is uh, uh, the folk ran into town. And told folk uh, what had happened, uh, and instead of them uh, rejoicing, amen, instead of them rejoicing over the man uh, coming out of what he was in, they went and told folk in town, can I, can I come down your street? They got on their phone and started texting. They, they made a Facebook post that this itinerant peasant from Nazareth of Galilee have come here and dealt with this crazy man and, and our pigs are dead. And the folk ran into Gadara to see what was going on. Y'all know how it is? Y'all know how it is? We get news. That something has happened. 
Everybody posts everything on Facebook. And folks see it on Facebook, they'll stop cooking, they'll stop cutting grass, they'll jump in the car and run and try to see where the trouble is. Uh, these folk uh, came to see. Notice what they did. They said to Jesus, they made a request for him to leave town. Can I help you today, Mount Zion? I don't care what you do. I don't care what you're going through. Don't ever ask Jesus to leave Mount Zion. Whatever you do, don't, don't, don't serve Jesus an eviction notice to leave town. Because if Jesus ever leave the church, can I tell you what to do if Jesus leave the church? Padlock the doors. Sell the pews. Donate the choir robes to somebody who can use them. Get rid of all of the instruments. Uh, amen. Uh, disband the deacons, the trustees. Uh, don't have no more Sunday school. None of that. If Jesus... Uh, Leaves the church. They wanted their help. They, they wanted deliverance. To leave town. Oh, I want to tell you, that's what's so wrong with so many of our churches. Amen. There's no Jesus. Can I help you? There's no Jesus. There's no Jesus. There's no Holy Ghost. There's no word going forth in the church. You wondering why folk pulling knives on each other in the church? Crazy folk. You wondering why people are putting their six shooter on their hip and coming to the business meeting? Amen. There's no Jesus, no Holy Ghost, and no word. In the church, you wonder why folk cussing and falling out and fighting in the church? Because sometimes there's no Jesus, there's no word, there's no Holy Ghost. And when there's an absence of Jesus, there's an absence of the word, there's an absence of the Holy Ghost, there will be chaos, there will be craziness in the church. I won't tell you. I've gotten some calls just this week about crazy stuff that's going on in churches. That's why those of us who stand behind this sacred desk, we need to stand on the truth of what God's word says. We have no right to change what the word says. But our problem is we got too many crazy folk come up with some crazy bylaws, brought them in church, and some crazy folk in church who don't know the Bible, uh, who will take the bylaws over the Bible uh, and start trying to govern the church uh, uh, like the Democrats and the Republicans uh, uh, try, to, try to govern their parties. Uh, but I want to tell you, uh, this is not a democracy. This is a theocracy, and God rules. Can I tell y'all God is in charge? God is in charge. How you know God is in charge? It's his church. He paid for it. He died for it in his own blood. His name is on the deed of title. And who are we to walk around and talking about this Ibis church? Hallelujah, somebody. It's our church. We do what we want to because this our church. I, uh, your name is not on the title. He paid for it in his own blood. And he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Can you, if I was one of these look at your neighbor preachers, I would tell you to look at your neighbor and say it's his. It's his. It's his. And they requested. 
that Jesus would leave town. Not only was that man crazy, but the folk who asked him to leave were crazy folk. Let me see if I can come down your street. Isaiah said, behold, I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell, I tabernacle, I live among a people that's just as messed up as I am. All my, my brothers and sisters, they asked Jesus to leave town. Mount Zion, whatever you do, don't ask him to leave the church. Amen. You might have to ask some folk to leave. You, you, you might have to silence some folk. Uh, you may have to withdraw the right hand of fellowship from some folk. But if everybody else leaves, make sure that Jesus. <sighs> make sure he stays in the church. What it looked like. You, in, you evicting Jesus from a house he paid for. You, you, you evicting Jesus uh, from a place that he died for. You going to ask Jesus to leave the church and invite uh, your false prophet in. Can I help the church? Because see what happens in the absence of a pastor. What happens when a pastor transitions? The, the, the enemy. Can I just be real? The Negroes have been sniffing around Mount Zion. Since you're not going to invite me back, I think I'm going to say it while I'm passing by. Uh, the folk that's looking for a church and a check. I've had, I've known preachers to transition. And before the family even plan a service, I've had folk calling me, asking me about churches. I, I don't pastor those churches. I pastor First Baptist. And if the Lord wants you there, the Lord will drop your name. If the church prays, the Lord will drop a name. Because he said, I will give you pastors according to my own heart, who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. But yet, there are some chief apostles. I wasn't intending to say this, but it's coming in right now. There are some folk who don't mean the church no good. And everything Pastor Colin spent 31 years preaching, teaching, praying, laboring, crying, going to and fro and laying before God. And it would be a shame to let some smooth talking, Johnny come lately, oil in the pocket, holy water in the left hand, prayer cloth on the shoulder, and telling you. That the Lord just laid y'all on my heart. Be careful. Because there are some crazy preachers just like there are some crazy folk. I'm trying to help the church. Because we need to stop playing Russian roulette with the hearts and minds and souls of men, women, boys, and girls. This thing is serious. And God is tired of crazy folk trying to take control of the Lord's church. They told him, we requested. They pulled the nephew Tommy. They said the family done voted. The eyes have it and so is the order. 
We want you to get out of our town. Can I help you? And tell you if you don't want Jesus in your church, Jesus will leave. The Lord is not going to force himself in any situation that he's not invited in. Amen. You got to invite him to be in your presence. And so they requested. They said, we want you to leave. You to leave town. Jesus said, if y'all want me to leave. Jesus said, give me time to pack up my stuff. Let me get these 12 rascals that's with me. We'll get back in the same boat that we came here on. And Jesus said, we'll leave y'all's town. And I won't tell you, my brothers and sisters, they chose money over mercy. The Bible says that this man uh, was clothed. Amen. Sitting and in his right mind. Let me help some Baptist folk out. Because in them prayers we pray. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning. Closed in my right mind. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible said that this man had been naked. This man had been in the tombs. This man had been destroying himself. But the Bible said the same man that they call crazy. The same man who had been cutting himself. The same man who had been living in the cemetery. The same man that they couldn't bind with feathers and chains. The same man that everybody was running from. Now that same man has encountered the man. And that man is sitting clothed and in his right mind. And folk, instead of rejoicing, uh, folk are angry with Jesus. They asked Jesus. Lord, have mercy. They asked Jesus. They asked Jesus to leave. To leave town. They said, we want you to get out of our coast. Amen. And so, the next request is from the demoniac. Uh-huh. Notice what the text says. Came into the ship. That man that was possessed with the devil uh-huh. prayed him that he might be with him. Yeah. I don't blame the man Amen. for wanting to be with Jesus. When folk have delivered you out of your distress, you want to hang around the folk that help you out of your situation. This man that said, wherever Jesus is, I want to be. And I want to tell you, there's nothing wrong with this man's request, his desire to be with Jesus. Matter of fact, I wish I had more folk who want to be where Jesus is. Because where Jesus is, Deacon Charlie Wade used to say at the Evergreen Baptist Church, he said that where Jesus is, on land or on sea, where Jesus is, there's a heaven there. And I won't tell you, my brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I want to be where Jesus is. I was a boy, boy growing up in El Dorado. I was a daddy's boy, and wherever my daddy was, I wanted to be where daddy was. If daddy was watching TV, I wanted to be sitting close to him. If daddy was going somewhere, I wanted to be with him. When daddy got ready to leave the house going to church on Sunday morning, everybody else would be there waiting to go, with, but daddy would leave uh, uh, 45 minutes before church started. The church was right up the street. Amen. Because I wanted to be with my daddy. I, I, I'd get close and I'd walk to church with my daddy because I was a daddy's boy. This man in the text now that he's delivered, he's a Jesus boy. Can I ask you a question? Are you a Jesus boy? Are you a Jesus girl? Do you really want to hang out where Jesus hangs out? If Jesus is by the sea, I want to be where Jesus is. Because where Jesus is, there's peace there. Where Jesus is, there's joy there. Where Jesus is, there's hope there. 
where Jesus is, there is understanding there. Uh, and there is somebody here today. Uh, you're on the outside looking in, uh, but I invite you uh, to come to Jesus. Uh, he says unto me, come unto me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden. Oh, now I give you rest. I need to try to get out of this text. But I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, he asked Jesus, I want to go with you. That's the request that the man makes of Jesus. Jesus says, but I got a request that I want to make. Jesus says, I'm delighted that you want to go with me. Jesus says, but you can serve me better if you go home. This is homecoming, isn't it? Jesus says, if you just go home. I, I, I know you've been strung out, but go home. I know you didn't leave home like you wanted to leave. He says, but go home. He, he says, I, I know things were not ideal uh, when you left, but Jesus says, go home. That's what he's telling somebody that's sitting here today. The Lord is trying to tell you to go home. Uh, he, he's trying to tell you, you wandered far away from God. Uh, and you need to say, now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I've trod. Uh, and now I'm coming home. Open now thine arms of love. Lord, I'm, I'm coming home. Is there anybody here that need to come home? I, 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 I know uh, that you left home and you thought you were, you were all of that because you was 18. And you started smelling yourself. And you got crazy and lost your mind. And you left home. And you find out when you left home that things were not working uh, like you thought they were going to work. But I thank God when I can't go nowhere else, I can always go to 7, I can always go to 711 South Smith Street. Because that's home uh, for us. Uh, I, I don't care other folk may write you off. Uh, other folk may not let you in. Uh, but I thank God today uh, that you can always uh, come, go home. Uh, and so Jesus says to the man, uh, Jesus says, go home uh, to thy family and friends. Uh, and then when you get home, uh, Jesus said, I don't want you to sit down. Uh, Jesus says, I want you to go home uh, and tell, uh, uh, tell them uh, the great things uh, that the Lord uh, has done. Uh, I, I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, uh, when you encounter Jesus, uh, you ought to leave uh, with a personal testimony. Uh, you ought to be like the William brothers saying, I am uh, a living testimony. Uh, I could have been dead and gone, uh, but Lord, you let me live on. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I am uh, a living testimony. Uh, I am uh, a mercy case uh, because mercy uh, suited my case. Uh, dead uh, in trespasses and sins, uh, walking according uh, to the prince of the power of the air uh, that now worketh in the children uh, of disobedience. Uh, but I heard uh, the voice of Jesus say, uh, come unto me and rest. Uh, lie down, thy weary uh, one, lie down, uh, thy head uh, up on my breast. Uh, can I tell y'all uh, what I did? Uh, I came to Jesus. Uh, just as I was, uh, I was wearied, uh, I was wounded, uh, and I was sad. Uh, but I found in him a resting place, uh, and the Lord uh, has made me glad. Uh, and so, my brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus says uh, to the man, uh, Jesus says, uh, I want uh, you to go home, uh, and I want uh, you to be an effective witness for me. Uh, I want you to go back uh, to the ten cities uh, of the Decapolis, uh, and tell them uh, that where I, you are, uh, I brought you. Uh, tell them that what I know, what you know, uh, I taught you. Uh, then you need to tell them that, that what you have, uh, I gave you. Uh, you need to tell them uh, what you are, uh, I made you. Uh, Jesus says, uh, I want you to go home uh, and tell somebody uh, the good things uh, that the Lord uh, has done for you. Uh, I want to leave this with you uh, because that man uh, who had been crazy, uh, that man uh, who had been naked, uh, that man uh, who had been bound uh, with fetters and chains, uh, that man uh, that nobody could do anything with, uh, that man uh, is now cl clothed uh, 
and in his right mind. And the man is going home to tell the story about how I got over. He said, I've been through the storm. I've been through the rain, but I done made it over. What is your testimony? Is your testimony is that I was strung out. I was on drugs. I didn't think I was going to make it, but the Lord saved me. I was bound uh, by the shackles of sin, uh, but the Lord uh, picked me up, uh, turned me around, uh, placed my feet uh, on solid ground. Uh, what is uh, your testimony? Uh, your testimony is uh, I didn't know Jesus. Uh, I wasn't fit to live. Uh, I was afraid to die, uh, but if Jesus uh, came to me, uh, and I have uh, been made whole, uh, I don't know uh, how you feel about it, uh, but I'm so glad uh, that I came to Jesus uh, just like I was, uh, weary, uh, wounded, and sad. Uh, I'm glad uh, that I found in him uh, a resting place, uh, and he has made me glad. Uh, I'm glad uh, today that I've been washed uh, in the blood uh, of the Lamb. Uh, can I tell you all uh, that this is uh, my story? Uh, this is uh, my song, uh, praising my Savior all the day long. Uh, blessed uh, assurance, uh, Jesus uh, is mine. Uh, oh, what a foretaste uh, of glory divine, uh, air of salvation, uh, purchase of God, uh, born in the Spirit, uh, washed in His blood. Uh, this is uh, my story. Uh, this is uh, my song. Uh, I'm going to praise Him. I'm all day long. Uh, is there anybody here uh, got anything uh, to praise him for? Uh, anybody here uh, got anything uh, to thank him for? Uh, I thank him uh, because he saved me. Uh, I thank him uh, because he raised me. Uh, I thank him uh, because he brought me. Uh, I thank him uh, because he never left me. Uh, I thank God uh, that he never uh, left me alone. Uh, I've seen uh, the lightning flashing. Uh, I've heard uh, the thunder roll. Uh, I felt uh, the sin breakers dashing, uh, trying uh, to conquer my soul. Uh, but I'm glad uh, that he never, never left me, left me alone. The testimony of a crazy man. And I want to tell you, that same man, that, that crazy man, went into town and talked about. Can I tell you what they did to him? One day they wounded him for our transgressions. One day they led him through the Via Della Rosa. One day they laid on his shoulders an old rugged cross. One day, they lied. They grilled though. One day, they put nails in it. One day, they riveted his feet. One day, they crowned him with a crown of thorns. One day, they pierced him in the side. One day, they gambled for his vesture. One day, they gave him vinegar to drink. One day, they said, others he saved. Himself, he cannot say. One day, he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders. Y'all already know what he did. But I just got to tell you. I got to tell you. He died. Didn't he die? Died until the earth began to reel and rock. Died. To the centurion said, I got to testify that surely this is the Son of God. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. And early, I said early, early, it was early, the third day morning, Jesus got up and said, I'm a living testimony, all power. Heaven and earth is in my hands. I'm glad today that I have a testimony. And I got to tell my story. How the Lord picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet 
on solid ground. I was in a horrible pit. I cried unto the Lord. And the psalmist said he inclined. In other words, he leaned over. The banisters of glory. And heard me cry from Sarah's Valley. Pick me up out of a horrible pit. Can I tell y'all what he did? Not only did he pick me up, he put me on a rock. Put a new song in my heart. And I've been running for the Lord a long time. And I'm not tired yet. I'm going to keep telling my story. Mount Zion, keep telling your story. Because somebody on the outside looking in, they need to hear your story. They need to hear that there is no secret. What the Lord can do. What he's done for others. Can I tell you, he'll do it for you. With arms wide open. As we stand all over the building. Reverend has preached out his heart. I have a testimony too of a crazy man. He came out of Hampton, Arkansas. Thought stealing watermelons was gonna be all right. Thought lying was going to be all right. Thought doing a whole bunch of crazy things was going to be all right. But one day, Jesus showed up. Changed my life. Changed my way of walk. Even changed the way I talk. Do you know him? He's all right. He's standing at your door right now, knocking, waiting on you to open up the door and let him in. And the thing that I know about Jesus, amen, he, he specializes in crazy folks. We don't act right. We don't talk right. But he said, come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and i give you rest today. Your life may be crazy. Your job may be crazy. I heard you, Reverend. But Jesus can save you. He can save you just where you are. Would you come today and give your life to Christ? I promise you one thing. That you will have everlasting peace. If you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life. I heard that ain't but two places. Not three, not four. There's two places. Hell. He didn't die that you can go to hell. He died that you may have eternal life. Would you come today? Would you come today? God is still waiting on you. Well, I don't want to come today. I, I want to come tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Would you come today? God's word had went forth in this place today. Would you come? God bless you. And God keep you, my prayer.
your hearts not burn as he walked us through the word of God. Amen. I, I dare not miss too many words because the word has already gone forth. So my job is just to get us out of here while we're still on fire. Amen. But in order to do that, I want to give us just a couple of announcements. Make sure, Mount Zion, we still do have revival starting tomorrow night. Amen. Starting at 7 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you, each and every one of you out here. And invite a friend, too. Amen. Amen. We want to make sure, Mount Zion, this is our revival. So if nobody else is here, we ought to be here. Amen. Uh, we want to say thank you again to First Baptist and Pastor Moore. Hey, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And I dare not look overlook anybody to each and every one of you who are here as well, uh, to the ministers and deacons and the guest churches that are gathered with us at this very hour. Uh, before we get too far, we want to give it back to our MC, and then she'll give us for. Again, we thank God for our being here. Thank you for inviting us. I pray that something was said that would be a blessing to you and your walk with God. We certainly uh, thank our First Baptist Church family who came uh, to be with uh, uh, us. We, uh, we, were, we were out on Tuesday night, and then we're out again to, today. And so I thank them for uh, coming and sharing and supporting again we continue to pray uh, for you to continue that the Lord will continue to hold you in the hollow of his divine hand if you should need us amen uh, I'm not talking about just coming to preach and all of that stuff but whatever you need us for we are our brother's keeper and our job is to try to do what we can uh, to help uh, the body of Christ. Uh, I say that in all sincerity. Uh, I love preachers. I love preaching. I love the church. Amen. Amen. And when Mount Zion make it, First Baptist make it, and vice versa. And so we have to understand that we are our brother's keeper. Amen. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for the food. Amen. That you shared with us. And I tell folk, I don't eat everywhere I go. I'm just being honest. I don't mind nobody knowing I'm a finicky eater. Amen. I watch the way folk hound food. Amen. Now, if they rub in the cat. If they staring with the same spoon, they just ate out of. I don't want me some of that. Amen. But when I come to Magnolia. Amen. I know if I go to Mount Zion, if I go to First Baptist, if I go to Jones Chapel, if I go to New Zion, I know we're going to eat well. I tell the folk, y'all got to go buy no chicken before y'all go. Amen. They're going to feed you well. Amen. And so we thank you for your hospitality. And uh, we, you, you, don't, you don't just find this everywhere. Amen. Thank you for your fervent spirit. Amen. And about... 
I guess by six, I'm going to be in that second plate. Hey, 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 amen. But again, we thank you. May God bless you. May God keep you. I, I want to, let me say to our church, I feel to say this this morning. Uh, we had death in our uh, membership. Sister Bobby Massey lost her brother, William Porcy, at funeral this Saturday at 11 at Hickory Ridge in Chittister. And Sister Cassandra Coleman, who had been a member of our church, moved to Little Rock. Her father passed away. That funeral also is Saturday at 11. And unfortunately, I can't be two places at the same time. Amen. But we want to be supportive of those families. I, I failed to mention that this morning, and I'll mention it again. Y'all will get a text from me sometime tonight in the morning. Amen. I'm the texting pastor. Amen. That's the best way to get in touch with uh, some folk. Good to, again, to have my wife. She's sitting there with three of her first cousins. You can't tell her nothing. Hey, 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 man. Don't y'all mess up Waldo in here thick. <laughs> so we, we thank God for each of you. It's good to have a good time. Amen. But when you got to go, you got to go. Amen. I know I got two plates back there, don't y'all? Get that plate that got my name on it. Amen. If you got problem reading, get you an interpreter. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ask somebody. <laughs> Amen. May God bless you. May he keep you. It's our prayer. <laughs> Let the church say Amen. I would dismiss you what I dismiss our church with most Sundays. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. May God bless you.